Hello. I'm here to tell you a bit about the Chicago Laboratory for Electroacoustic Theater, or CLEAT, Speaker System at Elastic Arts. This video will explain the main functions and features of CLEAT. It is meant to help you get started with using the system for your own projects. The Elastic Arts Foundation is a nonprofit organization that supports a community of musicians, artists, performers, and audiences in the Avondale, Logan Square neighborhood of Chicago and throughout the city. Elastic is an organization that exists to create space for all artists to create, but especially ones who are not welcome elsewhere because the content of their work is experimental, unorthodox, non-traditional, out of bounds, or reflective of racial, ethnic, sexual, or political identities that are unwelcome in or threatening to dominant cultural institutions. The Chicago Laboratory for Electroacoustic Theater, or CLEAT, is a community resource for multi-channel audio exploration. Artists making music, performance works, and or sound-based installation art are encouraged to work with our 16-channel system of hemisphere speakers installed at Elastic Arts in Chicago. We curate a monthly concert series and hold occasional training sessions. CLEAT was founded in 2019 and is co-directed by Stefan Moore, Matt Test, and me, Sam Clapp. As a music lover, you probably know that most sound systems reproduce sound using one speaker, mono, or two speakers, stereo. Mono systems are capable of manifesting a wide range of sounds from a single point. Stereo can reproduce those sounds with an added perk, spatialization. Stereo speaker systems can attain greater realism or surrealism thanks to their capacity to spread sounds across a stereo field. Stereo systems have been the norm in music playback since the 1960s. But since then, some adventurous sound artists and musicians have experimented with larger speaker arrays that allow the further spatialization of sound. Two common setups are 5.1 surround, which is five speakers with one subwoofer, or 7.1, which is seven speakers with one sub. Another is quad, four speakers surrounding the listener in a square. Elastic Arts is home to an even larger array, the 16-speaker Chicago Laboratory for Electroacoustic Theater, or CLEAT, system. This system is different than the surround systems I just mentioned in that it allows artists to distribute sound throughout a space instead of just around the edges. This array was designed by sound artist Stefan Moore using his unique Isabel Audio Hemisphere speakers, which radiate sound in all directions. Most multi-channel audio systems are housed inside universities and other private facilities. Our hope is to liberate multi-channel audio from its normally cloistered setting and empower artists to express themselves through spatial audio. Now, I'll explain in broad strokes how the CLEAT system works. Though the overhead speakers are the most obvious aspect of CLEAT, the heart of the system is a computer and an audio interface. The system cannot function without a computer controlling it. Whether you are synthesizing audio with your computer, playing back audio files, or directing live audio inputs from the soundboard to CLEAT, the computer acts as a hub for audio. So let's get started. The front panel of the rack can be removed by twisting and swinging out the four twist locks connecting it to the main rack, two on each side. Once removed, Switch the entire rack on with one switch, the rocker switch on the very top unit. Everything else should turn on when that comes on. No need to use any other power switches. The computer is connected to the interface, a Motu 16A, with 16 inputs and 16 outputs, via a TAN USB 2 cable. If you need some additional outputs to direct audio to the house sound system and sub, those are available via the Aphex digital to analog conversion device which is connected to the Motu 16A with an ADAT cable. Each of those outputs is connected to one of the 16 amplifier inputs. The amplifiers are set for the room and speakers, so please don't touch the dials. Instead, you can control your playback level from the computer. From the amplifier outputs, powerful amp level signals travel via speaker wire through the elastic office and on to the hemisphere speaker inputs where they are connected via quarter-inch plugs. Speaker 1, which you can address through audio output 1, is located by the door to the back hallway. From there, the speakers are numbered left to right, so that from your position by the cleat rack, the furthest left speakers in each row are 1, 5, 9, and 13. 
16 is located in the row next to the soundboard, closest to the office door. To use the Cleat system with your own computer, you will need to install the latest Motu 16A drivers. These can be found at https colon slash slash motu.com slash proaudio slash index dot html. Do not worry about installing firmware updates onto the interface. All you need is the drivers on your computer. Your computer will also need a standard USB 2.0 port or a dongle with a USB 2.0 port. Once the drivers are installed and the USB from inside the rack is connected, you should be able to choose the Motu 16A as the audio input and output device within the audio software of your choice, including Reaper, Audacity, Ableton Live, Max, Super Collider, Logic, Audition, Pro Tools, and so on. Once the Motu 16A is set as your output device, you should be able to send audio to the system. Here are a few examples of how to set the Motu 16A as your audio output device. For Pro Tools, Ableton Live, Reaper, and Max. One easy way to get audio out of the system is to set the outputs of individual tracks to external outputs 1 through 16, or setting the outputs of aux sends to external outputs 1 through 16. Then, audio files, live inputs, and virtual instruments will pass through those tracks or auxes to the designated outputs. But that's just one way to think about getting audio to Cleat. Users of Ableton Live's Max for Live can download multi-channel panning tools to set the positions of audio among the speakers. And Max users can develop their own software tools for addressing the speakers. Visit our website, cleat.info, for some starter Max patches, including some basic panning algorithms. As I mentioned earlier, the Aphex device provides eight additional outputs, which are accessible as Motu outputs 17 through 24. The main application of additional outputs is the ability to send audio to the main elastic subwoofer and left-right mains. When the Aphex device is properly connected to the Motu 16A, a green light will display on the front of the Aphex device. In addition, if you open Motu Discovery, an application that allows you to view and modify the Motu 16A's parameters, you can see that the two devices are talking to each other. In the next section, we will discuss how to patch signals from the Aphex device to the house sound system. The patch bay allows sounds to be routed between the main elastic sound system and the cleat system. This allows you to take live DI and microphone signals into the cleat system via aux sends, also known as buses. Note that on elastic soundboard, a Behringer X32, aux one is broken so you should use auxes two and higher. You can use sends on faders or select the desired aux and use the rotary encoder. Before we talk more about how to send live signals via the auxes, let's discuss the patch bay, which we will use to connect the X32 to Cleat. There are four rows of quarter inch TRS patch cables. The function of each of these four rows is as follows. Top row, top unit. The 16 analog outputs from the Behringer X32 mixing desk are wired to the first 16 patch points of this row. So, anything coming through bus 1 on the board will appear at the first patch point in the row. Bottom row of the top unit. This row sends out to the main house sound system at Elastic. Channel 14 goes to the subwoofer, and channels 15 and 16 go to the main left and right speakers in the house. These two rows are semi-normal to one another, meaning that a sound coming out of the X32 board at position 14 will go directly to the subwoofer, except when there is a patch cable interrupting the signal flow. Top row, bottom unit. Only positions 17 through 24 are active here. These are the breakouts from the Aphex unit, allowing channels 17 through 24 from the Motu 16A to be accessed and routed elsewhere. The most common use of this 
is using a patch cable to connect position 17 here to position 14 on the row just above, allowing the house subwoofer to be driven by output 17 of the Motu, and therefore output 17 of your software. Bottom row of the bottom unit. These are connected to the 16 analog inputs of the Motu 16A. To patch an instrument or microphone into the Motu, you can connect the signal to the X32 board, then route it to an output of the board, and then, on the patch bay, patch the board output, top row, top unit, into one of the first 16 positions on this row, and the signal will show up at the corresponding channel in your software. One of the most common situations that will require the use of the patch bay is using the 16 cleat speakers with the house sound system. To make this patch, use your software to route your sub material to output 17, your left main to 18, and your right main to 19. Then, make a physical patch from the Aphex device outputs to point 14, sub, 15, left, and 16, right, on the row above. Another common use of the patch bay is to route a live microphone signal from the snake to the cleat system. Let's say that we've mic'd a piano with a single mic, which we would like to send to cleat. Once we've set our gain for the piano mic on channel one, we can direct that signal to cleat via an aux send on the board. In this case, let's use aux three. We set our aux three output to unity gain, or zero decibels, to let the aux three signal exit the board and turn up the channel one send to aux three to a healthy level. From there, let's patch the aux three output into Motu input one, which we then direct to output one of cleat or the speaker closest to the back hallway. Success. What we do with this input is determined by our musical vision. For instance, we could route this signal to every single cleat speaker to get a massive mono sound, or we could use Max to have it sweep gently around the room. One very important note, whenever the cleat system is not in use, all cables must be removed from the patch bay so that normal use of the main sound system is not impaired. Many musicians associate multi-channel audio with sounds shooting around a room, a kind of effect that is often powered by an audio-focused programming language like Max, formerly known as Max MSP, Pure Data, or Super Collider. Those programs provide a powerful set of tools for dealing with multi-channel sound, especially in the hands of an experienced user but they also have a steep learning curve that not every musician is interested in climbing. The good news is that multi-channel audio is accessible for anyone with a laptop, a DAW, and musical ideas. One simple and effective way to use Cleat is to record a 16-channel piece of music into your favorite digital audio workstation, set the channel outputs to outs 1 through 16, and press play. You should use Cleat in whatever way sparks your creativity and allows you to get musical ideas into the world. When you use Cleat, you are playing a unique musical instrument, one that takes time to learn. Be patient with yourself and don't be afraid to ask for help. In conclusion, thank you for joining us for this brief tutorial on Cleat, the Chicago Laboratory for Electroacoustic Theater at Elastic Arts. Let us know if you run into any issues. We can't wait to hear what you create.